You all right? My name's Paul, I've got autism, and I make random videos based on my version of autism and the way my head works, and I stick the videos on the internet just in case you fancy giving them a watch. And I hope you're all doing all right. I hope you did what you needed to do over the Christmas break and New Year and all that jazz. Um, but something's a bit weird. Like, I spoke to a couple of people, like, who reached out in emails over um, Christmas and New Year, and I'm not having a go. But my intro that I say all the time, you know, like talking about sticking videos up if you fancy giving them a watch, they told me that they found me on Spotify or other audio places. And then I've mentioned to them that I'm on YouTube and they go, oh, do you do videos as well? Like, yeah, I do. That's why the introduction I say, you know, make random videos if you fancy giving them a watch. So if you've just become... If if my intro has just become background noise to you, <laughs> which I can fully understand it doing, uh, yeah, I'm on YouTube and that's where most of the stuff is. I don't put all the audio up on um on the on the audio stuff. I just you know the primary purpose is the videos because I want people to see my big ugly face while I talk to you because why not? Um, yeah. So let's have a little catch up before I do what I do best, which is moan. Um, and the topic is talking about sort of returning back to the world because, you know, coming like finishing off Christmas and New Year and sort of having to go back out again and and do the world. You know, it's not a good feeling and it's not just at Christmas. It's from annual leave. It's from long weekends. It's. You know, when I when take time out and then I have to come back out again, it's difficult. So I just want to sort of talk about it and why I struggle with it. And if you line up, brilliant. If you don't, then it's just a bearded guy having a moan. All right, but I'll, I'm going to give you a bit of a catch up because you know me, I love a waffle. Um, and if my voice sounds a little bit different than usual, I don't know um, if it does or not. But I had COVID over Christmas. What a gift that was. Um, so like the week before, um, I went to the hairdressers and sort of on the way there, my throat felt a bit funny. Like, like when I went on holiday, it all started the same. Um, so if anything, I've had COVID twice in like three or four months, which isn't fun because the second time around it was worse. So I just hope I don't keep getting it until it uh, puts me in the floor. But, um, went to the hairdressers with a bad throat, walked back from the hairdressers with a really stiff back. Um, did a COVID test, it was negative, and then slept, Saturday came around, and I felt like I'd been run over by a truck, and I did another COVID test, and confirmed, and it was bad, you know, I mean, like, I think it was about Christmas Eve, where I'd done the test, again, and it had actually left my system, sort of, you know, near on seven days later, but I've, it's the 7th of January now, as I film this, um, and you know, I've still got like my, my right ear, this is why I mentioned my voice. I sound weird to me because my right ear is fully blocked and it will not dislodge at all. I've taken decongestants. I've done that thing you do, you know, when you get water in your ear and you sort of stamp on the floor and shake your head. Um, that nothing's dislodging it. I've tried popping me, you know, when you squeeze your nose and try and blow your eardrums out. I've tried all that and it's just not happening my year is done so that's going to be a fun thing to try and sort out of the doctors if it doesn't clear itself and um i've been left with a cough i cannot shake this cough it's driving me up the wall um so if i do cough on this uh video <laughs> or on the audio i will delete the noise because i don't want to drive you mad with driving myself mad um, but it was weird because it was the first time ever I've lost my sense of smell and taste. Um, you know, so that was really weird. So like I'd made cheese on toast. So obviously I've got the toast, which is rough, and then I've got the cheese on top, which is soft. And it, when I was eating it, it was like one of them sponges that you can get when you clean your dishes, like where it's spongy and then a bit rough. And I honestly, if I'd, if I'd have shut my uh, eyes, I would not have, been able to tell the difference um so maybe that's how i'll save a bit of money because the world's expensive i'll just start eating sponges when i lose my uh, sense of smell and taste uh, but that finally came back it only went for about 72 hours um but it didn't come all the way back until probably a couple of days ago 
Um, and my voice goes a bit croaky, a bit groany, and yeah, it's just uh, it's not fun. So if you haven't had it, get your masks on because honestly, it's uh, it's horrible. There you go, first cough of the video. Um, what else has been going on? Uh, knee, just to update you on my knee, still haven't had a letter. Um, and what's crazy is obviously the NHS. Everyone who works on the on the bottom line, the ones who are actually doing the day jobs and working double shifts, they will forever have my respect. But the people making the decisions at the top, they need a shuffle and a, and a head slap because they're just useless for coordination. And, you know, it's mad because you see footballers, they get injured and then they stretch it off. And then it, you read on the, you know, sports news, it's like, oh, such and such had an operation on his knee, you know, later that evening. So, oh, it must be nice when you can pay for it. Here's me nearly a year later, still hobbling around in pain with every step I take. And the doctors aren't bothered. It's driving me crazy. Um, and then to top it all off, guess what happened the other day? Toothache. <laughs> so those who've pitched in and listened to me moan forever about dentists and fears of dentists, I'd eaten something to eat, and um, which is handy because that's what you're meant to do with something to eat. and. I just put me sort of nail down a tooth just to try and pick some food out. Oh, the pain was unbearable. And um, yeah, so guess who's got to go to the dentist at some point and I get stabbed in the face by needles? Me. Um, but everything's expensive, you know, that's what I fear. Going to the dentist because I have to pay private, as I've told you a thousand times before, because I've got too many fears and anxieties and it's the only way I can get to the dentist. And um it's just so expensive and, you know, like, I, I, I've got a, a, on my shelf that you can't see, um, I've got a watch, you know, I spent a bit of money on a watch when things weren't as expensive many years ago and uh, the battery had gone in the watch and I find it really unusual to have something that shows the time, but the time isn't working. I don't know what it is, I just find it unsettling. So I took that to um, a place in town just to get the, the battery changed. £25? £25 to change a battery? Could have got another watch with that. You know what I mean? It's like, what? why is a battery £25? I don't know, but I'm just moaning, obviously, which is what I do best. But um, I hope you're all doing all right anyway, and I hope Christmas wasn't um, a disaster. <laughs> obviously, I did them Christmas videos just to try and share things that I struggle with and sort of, you know, let you know if you struggle with them too. You're not by yourself so um i just hope whatever you did it was it was more in your favor and you took more control and you didn't just do for others like we always do um but i had the covid as the excuse and nobody could come near me anyway um so as much as i was lying on the settee dying feeling like i'd been ran over like the pain in my muscles i didn't even know i had muscles anymore but the pain in them the pain on my skin i couldn't move the fevers were ridiculous honestly i was lying there like someone had thrown a bucket of water over me and then you could click your fingers and i would be frozen to the bone i've not felt that forever <laughs> and it was uh so unusual to just go this through this range of, of flare-ups it was weird but um anyway i'll stop going on about my covid experience um but anyway so I want to talk about returning to the world, okay? So what I mean by returning to the world is there are times where you get time off. You know, you get time away from what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. You get to be more you. You get to be more in tune with who you are. You get to do things you want to do. You don't have to mask as much. You don't have to blend in as much. And obviously, I'm talking about me. Don't get shirty because I'm talking about me. Second cough. Um, honestly, if I'd have tried this video a week ago, it would have been every minute that I was coughing, But so it's slowly getting there. But, you know, I just... The more of me I give to the world, the less I feel like me. And I mentioned something to someone... Um, yesterday, actually, and um, what I, what I actually said 
I made myself feel really sad <laughs> for saying it. Um, and I said, sometimes, or a lot of the time, you know, I give so much of myself to others just so I can hide and blend in, you know, that I, I don't feel like there's much of me left sometimes, um, the real me. And I feel like a, a background character, like an extra in my own life because I'm doing everything for everyone else. And, you know, not that I want to be in the spotlight ever, but, um, you know, you should be afforded the spotlight when you're the main character in your story, you know? So it's just unusual. And, you know, when I, when I think of what it's like to feel connected to who you are, when you feel like you can actually be yourself because people just don't get that. People don't understand what I mean by that. When I talk to people who are not autistic, they don't understand. Some people try to, and I really appreciate that. But there are some people who query and challenge. They want to challenge you on the way you're designed to sort of say, well, why don't you just snap out of that and do what everybody else is doing? And it's like, well, why don't you snap out of that and do what I do? You know, why, why, why do I have to be the one who changes? And people can't understand when I tell them, look, you know, the person I give to you, I am still telling you the truth. But the person you're seeing is not the person I am. I am absolutely different to the person I'm giving you, but I'll, you know, I, the food I like, the real me is the food I'll tell you I like. You know, the drink I like is still the same drink. The, you know, the things I enjoy in conversation, still the same things. But what you're presented with, that isn't me. You know, and I will always try to explain to people why I've got to do it. But like I say, some people just cannot understand. And what I what I notice is, and this was something I did in one of my previous jobs, I just became so involved in the work that needed to be done. And the pace I was working was ridiculous. I never took a day off. I never took a break. I didn't have a break in the days. I was getting paid for like seven and a half hours, but I was working nearly 12 hours like an idiot. Um, because I had to do these practical fire demonstrations and, you know, I, I had to recharge extinguishers. I had to refuel um, diesel at petrol stations. I had to reset up my um, testing rigs and I had to test them to make sure there was no leaks because there was propane on them. And I had to do that every night to be able to go and do it the next day because of how heavy my workload was. And whereas other people would burn out, I just dial in. And I just became so fixed on the process, getting up, you know, getting showered, getting dressed, getting there, doing the stuff, doing the testing, doing the recharging, back home, bed, repeat, 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 repeat. And I think I've told you, but that little section of work that I did is where I first grew facial hair <laughs> because... I used to always have this like little tash and little chin thing just to break up my round face because it's a it's a round face. It's uh, weird. It shouldn't be so round, but it is. Um, so it was just to break up the roundness because, you know, I didn't have hair either. So I just was this football with a body, um, a real football, just in case Americans are watching, you know, none of that soccer that you call it. It's football because we use feet to kick a ball. You know, we don't put armor on and chase an egg. So, um, yeah, but I, I, and what had happened is sort of, I'd got to the end of a month and I, I don't really look at myself much in the mirror. The only time I do is to go, you did good today, Paul, you did right. You know, if, if I've had to make a tough decision, I'll look in the mirror and I'll go, you did right. You know, you, you had your pride, you had respect, you held your own, even though everybody disagreed with you, you have good intentions. So well done. Um, and if that sounds weird, then weird it shall be, um, because who else pats me on the back, you know? <laughs> so, um, I rarely look in the mirror if I'm not doing it for that sort of purpose. You know, I, I know how to wash my face without a mirror, throw water on it, grab a towel, dry it until there's no water left and hope for the best. And I, um, 
just remember, sorry, I'm coughing again. Um, I just remember looking in the mirror and noticing I had this beard because I'd sort of from the 1st of November to the end of November, I just worked and I just showered and I'd, I'd not taken care of like the other stuff. Um, so it's a good job I don't have like uni brows and hairy ears because that would have just all, you know, gone mad. But yeah, I ended up having a beard and I was like, oh, okay, whatever, I'll just keep it. And um, yeah, that's how the beard started in case you're interested in the origin of the beard. But yeah, I, so what I'm getting at, because I'm way going off tangents here, is I just got so dialed in with the process, with working hard, with grafting, with just becoming a tool. <laughs> so I was a tool, still am a tool. And um, it was a lot. But what you noticed, or what I noticed, like when I finally got a break from that, because I got three weeks off for Christmas because of how much I put into this. I got ill, you know, and this was obviously going back a lot of years, but I was ill because I actually stopped. The perpetual motion ended and I became unwell, um, really unwell. Like my body had just gone. That was too much. You weren't putting in the right fuel to keep yourself going. And, you know, now we're just not functioning as we should. And it was, ugh, that was, that was horrible. It was, I can't fully explain it, but it was kind of like my nerves, my nerve endings just didn't respond the way I wanted them to, you know, almost like you could look at your hand and go, right, I want you to close. And you just hand wouldn't close. And it's like, well, why aren't you closing? And then you'd forget about it and your hand would just close. I had this really weird reaction where my body just sort of short circuited on itself. And it was like my brain needed a reboot. Um, but anyway, so I want to, I'm trying to talk about what it's like to sort of go back to the world. So the reason I'm saying that is because to stay so involved in the world, you don't think about yourself. And when you don't think about yourself, you don't think about your needs, your wants, your recharge. And I didn't know I had autism then. Obviously I did. I've always had it. I just never knew I had it. And when you stay so dialed in, it's so easy to go back to, but you're neglectful of yourself. And that is absolutely the worst thing you can do because where's your well-being consideration? But then there's this sort of flip side of that where it's, okay, well, I'm going to pay more attention to me. I'm not going to work those stupid hours anymore. Stupid hours. Um, you know, I'm going to work more I'm going to work to the letter. I'm going to do my seven and a half hours a day or 12 hours a day or whatever it is you're scheduled to do. I'm going to do just them, them alone, doing no overtime. I'm doing as my contract states because I'm important too, and I'm going to take care of me. And you do, and one of the things which I try and do is I try and knock work down in pecking orders. I will always do my job, but I need to not be so emotionally invested in work. So I'm always trying to find ways to sort of put personal things in the way to stop work becoming so important. I try and like barriers, personal barriers to say, don't forget, Paul, you've got to do this. Don't forget, Paul, you've got to do that. Make sure you put half an hour into this a day, Paul. And it's like, oh, okay. And then work sort of stays plateaued at how invested I get in it. But I will always give 110% because I have to do a good job. That's what my brain tells me to do. But then I take, you know, what one of the things you realize is, you know, to look after you, you've got to do a lot that people don't understand. And that could be as simple as, you know, look, I need my time. I'm going to turn my phone off. Um, so if you do try and get in touch with me tomorrow, I'm completely not available. And people can't get that. They're like, well, what do you mean you're going to turn your phone off? It's like, that's it. It's just not going to be on. You know, it's easy to explain, but people can't get it. Well, what if I need you? What if I need to get hold of you? I don't know. Knock on my door. Sorry, coughing again. Um, but what, 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 what I've noticed is it's difficult to leave the house again. When you take time for you, it's hard to go back. You know, so I don't take like with annual leave, for example, you know, I if I'm taking a, a bulk of annual leave, I've got to be going somewhere or I've got to be doing something. What I can't do 
is use a bulk of annual leave to do something personal, completely personal. That's just for me where I might, you know, because it's, my hobbies are my hobbies and I embrace them. It's not, they're not for everyone, but I might buy a new computer game, might buy some new comfy clothes or comfy pajamas. I might get a few snacks in, you know, I might really give the man cave a good once over with the feather duster and the hoover, you know. And then when it comes time to sort of have a week off, I'm going to go, right, well, this week was put to the side so I can just forget the world exists and the desk is about as far as I'll consider now. And I can get lost in that and I can enjoy that. But what's hard and seems to be getting harder is returning back to the world. And even though some of the things just aren't difficult to do, it's the fact I've got to do it and I don't want to. And I know that's going to make me sound really spoiled and I don't mean it to come across as spoiled, but, you know, I, I, I can't tell you one person I know who wants to work. No one wants to work, but we've got to do it to pay our stuff. But, you know, I, I, I just don't want to leave the house sometimes. Or if I'm leaving the house, it's to do things I want to do. And, you know, you, you get stuck in traffic, you know, when you're driving somewhere and people cut in and, you know, these lane dodgers, people just driving to always try and get one car ahead. And then there's always traffic jams and people blame infrastructure. And it's like, look, infrastructure is a problem. I understand that. But do you know what the biggest cause of traffic jams are? You, the people who are doing the lane dodging and the speeding and the cutting in and, you know, flipping you off when you get to the lights or whatever, just because you weren't breaking the speed limit like they want to. And I just look at them and think, stop it. You know, you're the reason I don't want to leave the house. Why are you more important than me? Why is your journey more important than mine? Why do you need to, you know, drive in the lane and then just put your indicators on to get in front of me when I've been waiting in the traffic for 10 minutes? Why are you more important? If everybody just behaved respectfully of everybody else, so much more would get done. We'd get further. So I just don't like all of that. And, you know, in a workplace, it's going to sound horrible, but, you know, like say you're walking around in a big building where you all work. You don't know everyone, but you might have your name badge on or something. And, you know, it's like, hi, are you all right? You know, like a smile and saying hello to people. But I don't do that in the street. But because we're in a workplace, you feel sort of obliged to say hello to people you don't know. But, you know, people need to realize that just because I don't talk to you, it doesn't mean I hate you. You know, I don't talk about snails. I'm not bothered about snails. I've got no interest or investment in a snail, but I wish them no harm. I hope they're all right. And I wish weird people had stopped eating them, but I don't have to talk about them either. Just because I'm not talking about something, it doesn't mean I dislike it. It just means I'm not interested, you know, and dealing with people's small talk. And especially, I mean, like I say, it's the 7th of uh, January as a film, this and all week in meetings, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Is it, is it too late to say Happy New Year now? When do we stop saying Happy New Year? <laughs> and I just sit there thinking, if I could play bingo of guessing what people are going to say, that's on there. And I'm sure it's nice just to say Happy New Year. You know, I get that, but it's the expectant things, you know, nothing changes. And, you know, I get a little bit of reprieve through Christmas, even though I was unwell and you know, I'll come out the other side of it and it's like, oh, I've got to go straight back to it. And this is why I don't take annual leave in clumps because the more I, the more I take, the harder it is to go back. And I do believe getting older, it does get harder because you, there's only so many times you can walk back out of that curtain and go, oh, nothing's changed. Actually, it's gotten worse. You know, I'm still going to workplaces who, you know, bang their drum about how inclusive they are as an employer, but yet don't give autistic people the option of more holidays, you know? And I think that's one of the things we should be able to have access to is more annual leave days. And if they don't want to pay us for them, that is absolutely fine. But I need the freedom to take holidays because or annual leave because 
I don't take I don't take the annual leave because I want it. I take it because I need it. I'm always so fearful of burning out, but something so small and simple, it's like, oh right, sorry, I thought you like wanted a guest speaker who's famous and artistic to come and talk to you once a year. Believe it or not, I'm not interested in that. I would like to be considered as an individual who works for the company. And I'm not saying that about my company, I'm talking about it for companies. You know, start thinking properly for the people who work for you and talk to them, not companies who say they're specialists. Talk to the people who are autistic. But I just think it gives you a taste of what something could be. Now, it is difficult masking going out. It is tough to blend in, and it's hard for me to make small talk over things I'm not interested in. And, you know, I'm not having a go at the people, and, you know, they might genuinely be interested, but that's where there is that, you know, mist, that crossed path that, you know, ships in the night were just not on the same page. So, you know, I'm not interested, Gladys, if, you know, your your daughter's had your first grandchild and you're over the moon and you're showing everyone pictures. That baby looks the same as every baby. It looks like a bag of potatoes with a face. I'm not bothered. But then she'll be there going, oh, have a look at these. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you must be chuffed. Oh, I'm over the moon. Oh, let me tell you, it wriggled around. It's like, oh, shut up. So for me, I just... Because that is part of my mask, I have to feign interest in lives that I don't have a vested interest in. They're not my life. They're, they're other people's lives. And I want people to be happy, healthy, and to leave me alone because I don't want people taking an interest in what I do behind closed doors. You know, but people are so open and they, they share so much, but then they're so private. And I think it's because I just miss a line. I misalign with people, you know, the general population that's in my world that I have to go out and exist within, we don't link up. We're not in sync, which is why I started doing videos in the first place, because I just felt, is it just me? And this is why I talk to you, you know, and this is something I struggle with. I struggle going back after time where I'm allowed to spend it alone and do what I want to do. And I don't have to apologize for not being interested in other people and their lives, you know, because I care more if people talk about silly things, but people like to talk and show off. And I'm not interested in them showing off because there's nothing you can do that will impress me unless you tell me you've got new comfy pajamas. But it is something I struggle with. I do struggle with going back out. After The more time I get to spend as me, the real me, the unmasked me, the harder it is to go back out into the real world again. And I don't know if it's just me. Um, I don't know if sort of that transition, because it's really difficult to sort of apply that social lubrication again to get the wheels turning, to be able to get yourself back to where you were. Because that is the perpetual motion part, just to keep your wheels turning. And then what do I do? I try and earn enough coins over a weekend to recharge myself, to go back and do it all again, spend those coins all week, and then have to press repeat um, come the weekend. And then when I get time to recharge, I realize that my recharge becomes occupied with what I want to do, being unmasked, being more the real me, feeling at peace with it, and wishing I could take that person back out. But I can't take that person back out because it would cause me more problems to do that than just to keep the mask on, which creates more problems, creates more blah, blah, blah. And the cycle continues. But I just wanted to share something I struggle with. Whether you do, whether you don't, you know me, I'm a moaner and I like to share with you. But anyway, I'm going to go. So thanks for watching. And until next time, keep smiling.